We are told in all good books that the body is the shell, that the soul dwells in the body. And when the shell comes to an end, the soul leaves and takes on a higher form of life for some people. And then we take this shell and we put it in a $3,000 mahogany box, soft foam lining in there that you've never had when you were alive. And then you get a motorcycle escort when you don't need it at all on the last journey. Look at the people standing around and watering it, tombstones and all that sort of thing. Look at the fuss made over the shell. Why the weeping and the sadness? Listen carefully. You're afraid. You really don't believe. You're hypocrites, most of you. We are told that Jesus had come into town and he was a radical and he threatened their institutions and they crucified him because he was a threat to an existing system. He tried to say that there were lots of people out there that tended to, to go along with things as they were. They were part of the establishment who Jesus said were the hypocrites. They were in high places and a lot of them wear white colors and they wear robes and they speak in a very profound way and yet they are hypocrites they are proud of their temples and their churches and their synagogues and they have forgotten completely about the brotherhood of man and your society is not that different a breakdown of intellect and a breakdown of inquiry and magic substituting and eastern philosophy men are searching and they're getting uh, off they the real world are they, uh... In oh, they're sense. running away. They're running away. And hiding in hiding something else. In, in, get away from reality. Yeah, they can't take it. It's rough. When you live with someone that you believe you love, and then the divorce comes into the picture, and people get sick in your family, you can't count on material things. They seem to fall away. That's because you're looking for justice. You're given a false package. You're told if you give all the world all the best that you have, the best will come back to you. And it doesn't work that way. It didn't work for Jesus. It didn't work for Gandhi. The real world, anything can happen. Your major newspapers talk of the marvels of the technical and scientific achievements. And yet they have a page on astrology, which really belongs in the Middle Ages, which we are at the tail end of. And there are people that take to that. They really think there's such a thing as astrology. They think that the stars govern their lives. And so you see flying saucers and magic. Magic means violation of natural law. Do you think God would have gravity and then change his mind? Do you think that in God's infinite or divine wisdom, he designs a system of an interrelationship and correlation of a space-time continuum and then varies that natural law? Of course not. And the story of temptation is a senseless story. Consider this, that Jesus goes up to a mountaintop and Satan says to him, how would you like kingdom over the earth? And he says, get thee behind me. Imagine if you've known God, there is no temptation. It is only the hypocrite that is tempted. It is only the phony that is tempted. That no real Christian or Mohammedan or what have you will be ever tempted if they really believe in God. If Christ existed, and if he said these things, I tend to go along with this concept. He said, during the ascension, ye shall do even greater things than I. He walked on water. Man walks in space, and he walked on the moon. Jesus brought Lazarus back from the dead. Books say that he did this. Men like Pasteur and Madame Curie make it possible for millions of people to be alive, not one. By the way, if they understand Christianity, nothing would anger them. If a man broke into your home, you would feed him and clothe him and feel there but for the grace of God go I. I'm not pushing Christianity. All I'm saying is if you want a better world, you have to get out and make it.